Is it a user error or is it just a 16 year old piece of equipment with some problems? Let's take a look at the anatomy of a failure coming up next right here on Better Biomed. This is a Linvitec D3000. It's a shaver slash motor handpiece for orthopedics with an irrigator. The customer brings it to us with the complaint that when they activate the handpiece, the irrigator doesn't work. So we took it apart just to see what's going on. This is a 16 year old piece of equipment we purchased back in 2004. And I'm gonna show you guys what's all inside this beast. You can see we got the AC power that comes in here. It comes down to a step down transformer and based on the label over here, it says it steps it down to 37 volts AC. Down here you can see we have a bridge rectifier mounted to the base pan using the chassis of the equipment as its heat sink. Comes over here into a smoothing capacitor and from there, Voltage splits off. It goes over here to the handpiece driver board and control board. And the other piece comes on over here and they call this guy a uh, power board, which I guess it does, but it's also a motor driver board. You can see it's got voltage regulators, but at the same time, it's got drivers. And this is where my irrigator motor plugs in. And you can see it's only got two wires, so that makes it a brushed DC motor. So this guy, it turned on, everything behaved normally, and the motor supposedly wasn't spinning. And I thought, all right, let's 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 just take a look at this guy. Because, you know, getting a handpiece, getting a full control and all that, that's a lot of bother. If they're saying that the irrigator motor doesn't spin, a unit this old, you know, there's no visual indicators on the outside of the motor that there's dust or uh, brush debris on the inside or on the inside of the chassis. Normally you have a bunch of brush debris down here. There's nothing. So you would think that that motor looks like it's brand new. But just in case, here's where we come over and we hook it up to our regulated DC power supply. And we can connect it directly. But because this is a medical grade motor, one of the things that you have to pay attention to is there is a shunt diode here on the back of the motor. Now that makes this a polarized motor because normally a DC motor like this, it doesn't really matter um, if it spins one way or the other. It depends on the polarity of the input, obviously. But when it, whenever you see fan blades like this that are straight, that normally indicates that it can spin bi-directionally. The reason that this one cannot spin bi-directionally is because of that diode. And what that diode's there for is when you energize the motor and then you suddenly de-energize it, there's going to be a spike in current because that's what happens when you de-energize a coil. So when, whenever you de-energize one of these coils, there's going to be a spike which would backfeed into your other electronics. And that's a huge no-no. So what you have is you have this bleed off diode. So it, in normal operation, this guy is reverse biased and you know the electricity runs through the motor. But when you disable uh, the motor, when you shut off electricity, that spike of electricity back feeds in reverse through your wiring and it crosses this diode because now this diode is forward biased so now uh, the electricity can go through the circuit and bleed off naturally instead of back feeding. Because normally if you send electricity in one way, those components don't like it when there's a spike of voltage that comes backwards. So that's what that little uh, diode is right there, which means you have to be careful when hooking this motor up to a, a regulated DC power supply. So one of the first things that you're going to do when testing out a motor like this is you're going to set your current. So you clip your leads together and you set your current, which I'm going to turn this guy way down. Now, if this motor was good, I should be able to run it with 
less than an amp worth of current because there's no load. I don't have a tubing set on there. So the motor is just free spinning. The only drag is going to be this uh, planetary gear reduction. But we'll go into that in a moment when we go into the teardown. So what I did is I uh, connected my power supply. I set it to less than an amp. And then when you disconnect your leads, now you set your, your voltage. And this motor, you can see it's an RS-550PF. Now, the... The PF doesn't necessarily matter when you're looking up a data sheet. You're going to look up the RS-550 and start from there. And if you can find a data sheet for the PF version, good for you. But often the last, the last uh, numerals on your part number are going to be for special options like your type of wiring, your type of connector, and stuff like this little shunt diode right here. So anyway, let's go back to the test. I hooked the motor up to this guy. I really wish I would have recorded it because it was very cool. In the data sheet, it says that it's a 12 to 24 volt motor. Obviously, that's how you're going to control your RPM. When I connect this motor up at 12 and a half volts with less than an amp worth of current, it would not spin, which is unusual because normally it will spin uh, just slowly. Or if you grab onto the wheel at, at, at the beginning, your output shaft, when you grab onto it and you start to spin it, it will then, you know, maybe start spinning slowly on its own because you broke that initial inertia. But that didn't happen. This one here, it was just non-existent. There's no resistance on the wheel. So I increased the current and I set it to about an amp and a half at 12.5 volts and then I spun it and it, it acted very sluggish. It started spinning, almost like it was in a dead spot, and it started spinning up, and then it started going faster and faster, and I was not changing anything here. And when you have that, that is usually an indicator of long, long time grease, especially in planetary gear sets, or your bronze oil bushings, like at the input and output of your motor, those, uh, those bronze bushings will sometimes um, be contaminated and you know maybe even start wearing on your output shaft but anyway uh, sometimes it would spin at 12 and a half volts sometimes it would not I upped it to 16 volts and I increased the current dramatically to two two and a half amps and when the motor would spin up my voltage drop would be incredible it would go down to three four five volts and I would be pulling three and a half amps, I think three amps. This is only about a three amp power supply. So you're talking, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of current, man. And there's no way this tiny little motor should be pulling that kind of amperage. So the motor's bad. Basically, the whole sum of the story, the motor is bad. And we tested it with the regulated DC power supply and your data sheets. Use your data sheets. So let's take a look at your brushed DC motor. Let's take a look and see what we got. First off, this guy was real fun breaking into. You can see right here, this is the back plate with uh, the shunt diode, and there's your brushes. Now if we take a look at these brushes, let's see if I can separate them enough, you can see that they got a comb pattern. You see that three, three little combs on the brushes, and they will rub right here. You see how I got those three slight indents? So there's not very much wear and tear on this. The reason they do the comb type of brushes is because as it wears in, those lines will wear off and you got a lot more um, longevity out of your motor, basically. So you can see right there on all my commutator bars, there's no uh, conjunctions because sometimes you get a bridged commutator bar because of long time wear and tear on these motors and there, none of these are bridged that I can tell. They're all very separate. It actually looks really good. That's not the problem. Uh, the problem partially is in probably the grease of the planetary set. It's old and also the uh, tolerances on those bronze bushings. These guys right here. Those tolerances are a little bit out. It weeble wobbles in there a little bit. Um, Who's to say, you know, that debris probably got down inside your rotor right here. I haven't, I haven't ohmed any of it out. It doesn't really matter. This whole unit is sold as a, 
as a part and unfortunately this manufacturer um they still support it luckily luckily and they're not very expensive it's only like fourteen hundred dollars to change out the whole entire unit for uh replacement but unfortunately this motor is going to cost me fourteen hundred dollars absolutely ridiculous since they have the the molex style connectors it's really easy to change it out i don't understand why they wouldn't just sell you the part especially when it just plugs in right here you know you got your standard uh, retention screws in the faceplate doesn't really make sense it's just another manufacturer just screwing over hospitals but here we are planetary gear set that's uh, gear reduction as you guys uh, hopefully know that when you revolve something when it spins rpm and torque are usually inverse of each other kind of like voltage and current amps um, so as as voltage decreases amperage goes up which is why i was diving down to a low three four volts but i was pulling like three amps worth of current i was pretty much maxing out this power supply because there's an inverse like the lower the voltage the higher the current because there's still the same amount of load well it's the same thing with revolutions if i need to get a lot of torque out of something i have to decrease the amount of revolution so at one end you spin it really fast and at the other end through planetary gear reduction you spin it slow and it it, it exponentially increases the amount of torque at the output shaft so let's go over what we see right here um, let me pull this guy out so these guys right here are called planetary gears because they spin around and this guy which normally mounts on your output shaft right here this would be called the sun gear because it's in the center and the planets revolve around the sun and you can see right here what happens is it spins these little gears which in general rotates your output shaft they're all attached by this large wheel so that's a planetary gear reduction system so if you were to order this motor and they would ask you like what's your gear reduction normally on the outside of, of either your planetary set or your motor it will say 1 to 24 or 24 colon 1 um, because that would be 24 for every 24 spins of your rotor you have one revolution of your output so that would be a 24 to 1 reduction but uh, here I don't know what it is that's obviously proprietary you can tell that that's probably that little PF indicator on the motor but that is what failed your motor and there's nothing we can do about it I just tore into it because why the hell not just cool to take a look at it so you guys can see what would fail and this grease right here is probably part of the problem it's very sticky it, it got thicker with age and that's to be expected this is a 16 year old unit we bought it in 2004 so that is it guys that is the anatomy of a failure and unfortunately there's nothing I can do about it this time but at least you guys know a little bit more about what's going on inside one of these beautiful little devices thanks for watching guys